All right, what's up, you guys? Um, I'm in this weird half kneel because I'm not sure where I am in relation to the camera um, and the whiteboard. But I want to go through um, some things about starting strongman because this is all relatively new to me and things I'm kind of learning. Uh, definitely my training in the past was very like hit style oriented, especially working in burn. It's all very high intensity, very metabolic. Uh, and that was cool, but it didn't prepare me for what strongman was gonna do to my body. So that's where I'm talking about work capacity, conditioning, all the events, um, what lifts you've been focusing on, is the bench press important, uh, Olympic lifting, all those things, uh, and also all the equipment you'll need and the events that you'll see in a strongman competition. First thing I'm learning is that strongman is incredibly inconsistent. You never know what you're gonna see in a strongman competition, hence why training for a specific competition is really important because you will never know what event you're gonna see. There are literally over 40 different potential events in strongman. One thing, however, you'll never see is a bench press because it's not powerlifting. Um, however, I do think a bench press day is important. Um, I will be starting as soon as I move. I, I've been kind of just messing around um, just because the schedule has been so inconsistent. But whenever I move back to Pittsburgh, I will be starting Brian Alsara, and that's A L R. Wait, A L R U S H E. That's not right. Um, but Brian's also, I always say his last name wrong, Brian, Brian Alsra, A-L-S-R-U-H-E, that's definitely wrong. Anyways, um, he does have a four day a week program. Um, he has like the four horsemen, he has a, a power build strongman um, that I own, and he also has the four horsemen, the mass builder, and he has a bunch of others, but those are the three that I own. Um, and I'm gonna be starting, I believe the, um, the Four Horsemen program first. In his program, he does have four days a week, and I do think that that makes the most sense when it comes to strength training, especially if you're training for strongman, because overhead press is literally in fucking everything. It's literally in everything. It's in your long cleaner press, your axle cleaner press. The stone over bar, for me, will be at my head, so I do need to get over my head. There's stone to shoulder, sandbag to shoulder, sandbag um, over bar, sandbag throws over your head all those things. Um, I would say the overhead press and the deadlift are probably the two most important. Uh, those are the two I think that I would put in the forefront of any program and I'm going to go through kind of like a very basic program on what you would need. So if you are starting a strongman, my biggest thing would be to focus on those four lifts the most um, and have them be your heavy lift always. Deadlift, squat, overhead press, and bench press. Doesn't matter what version you choose, you could be doing a deadlift with an axle, a squat with an SSB bar, overhead press with an axle, with a log, bench press with a log, with an axle, with a uh, multi-grip bar. Always working on different um, angles, doing your deadlifts with farmer carry handles, with upright farmer handles, um, with a trap bar, all those kind of things. Um, camber bar squats, SSB squats, uh, even like a SSB yoke bar, like from Elite FTS all those types of things, very important to focus on the, those main lifts. What kind of equipment do you need? Truthfully, if you want to train a strongman, every strongman event is definitely going to have something with a log, most likely something with an axle, barbell or axle, usually an axle, um, some sort of stone or a loading event, like a medley, so it could be stone, sandbag, um, and a carry. Generally always, and the yoke is pretty prominent. So what things do I think if you are starting a strongman you need to own? First, the basics you are definitely gonna to need to own a barbell and a squat rack slash power rack. Um, if you have, like right now, I just have a, um, a squat stand right now. I think this is a S3 or something from Rogue. It is a great uh, stand. I bought safeties for it. It's a Monster Light edition, so there's a ton of accessories. Um, I will be buying a power rack when I open my gym, obviously many power racks. Um, and I would recommend that if you have the money for it, Get yourself a power rack, get a monster from Row because they have the most attachment capability, like the mono lifts, um, a leg roller, different safeties, different attachments, different pull-up bar versions. Uh, the biggest thing for, the, my opinion, that I need to work on and I think most people need to work on to be good at strongman is obviously work capacity and the four main lifts, but grip over everything. It's all about gripping, crushing grip, holding things, holding out of that sweaty freaking axle as you're trying to deadlift it for the ninth time. Um, it's a ton of grip work, it's a ton of back, like a ton of back. You should be doing rows all the freaking time in strongman uh, training. So what would I advise? I'd say you definitely need a basic 
rack or ring of some kind, whether it's a one that you fold against the wall, one you throw in your garage, um, or obviously you just belong to a, a strongman gym or a commercial gym. Definitely need one of those. A barbell, for sure. An axle, you can always make your own axle um, buying piping at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, if you know a welder, that'll be really helpful for you. Um, but gonna need that. Gonna need an atlas stone. There are replacements. You could get a loading pin um, or a power pin and fill it with um, fill it up with bumper plates or steel plates and use that as a makeshift atlas stone. But nothing in all of my time lifting from the age of, of, of 14 years old to 22 now, I have never picked up something like an atlas stone. If you could pick up a 200 pound atlas stone, you can pick up 200 pound anything because it's a round ball of concrete. Um, so if you can pick up that, you can pick up anything. Log, definite necessity. Axle, definite necessity. Stone, definite necessity. And sandbags, totally necessity. Again, you can use sandbags as a temporary replacement for a stone. Buy a stone mold, make those. It's not gonna be that expensive. My, the stone molds that I bought, um, I bought two at this point. Uh, in total, 200 bucks and you can make as many as you want. And you can also change the sizes by what material you put in it besides just making like a, a concrete stone. Um, you can also put filler in it. You could put in um, a, like a, on Slater's Stone's um, YouTube channel, they actually show you how to make your own. But you could put in styrofoam balls inside to make them lighter, how to make them heavier. I would always start with something that's in a pretty mid range. So I have, I bought from Rogue their rubber atlas stone. Um, I bought a 75 pound, I'm gonna buy a hundred pounder. Right now I bought um, from this awesome guy, Chad, 130 pound, 160 pounder, and I have two stones at 116, 175. So obviously I'm gonna need heavier ones um, for my gym. Buying the mold means you can make them endlessly, um, especially if you're running a gym, especially if you are um, really gonna be serious about your training. I do think that buying stone molds is really a really intelligent choice. A lot of this kind of stuff is DIY. Should you have a sled? I think absolutely. Um, but could you make a sled out of a tarp and a rope or a tire where you pile weights in it? Um, totally, tire, tire that you pour um, sandbags on. You could get a, a small tarp and on the end they have all those clips. Put a rope around it, throw some sandbags on top, throw some weight plates, whatever, and pull that stuff around, push it around, all of it. I think it's genius. Um, do you need a yoke? I think the answer is yes, however, you can buy a conversion kit for your squat rack to turn it into a yoke. Um, is it the exact same? Of course, no. Um, I do think that a yoke is really important. If you are short on cash, buying a yoke is super smart because you can use it as a squat stand um, and as a, um, you can always throw safeties on it and use it for your rack pulls, throw a pull of arm top, use it for your pull ups, all that kind of stuff. So I think that a yoke is really, really important. This list is not in order of importance, but I think a log axle, very important, sandbag, very important, sl um, stone, irreplaceable, and a yoke, incredibly important and can be doubled as a squat stand. So if you're short on money, this is the one to go for. Not to mention a ton of companies have ones that are cheaper. I personally believe always buy the highest quality so you only have to buy it once instead of a million times. Um, farmer handles. You've got the ones that are upright and ones that are just standard handles. I own the standard handles and I've ordered um, some from Texas Power Concepts. Check them out on um, Instagram, they have lots of stuff. But upright ones as well that convert into a frame. Because in competition, you will see you have a farmer's walk or a frame walk, farmer carry, frame carry, um, often in a medley where you have to farmer carry one thing or carry a big sandbag, run back, grab a frame, all that kind of stuff. Tires, tires you can get for free. Um, you can go to any tire yard, they want to get rid of those big ugly tractor tires, throw that shit in your backyard and flip it around. If you're living in an apartment, um, you can always put it in the back alleyway, you can go to a gym that has tires, that's my biggest thing I'd recommend. If you don't have the money for all this kind of stuff, just find a strongman gym, that's why they exist, um, so you have it. Circus Dumbbell. Circus Dumbbell is in a lot of strongman events, not everyone, but it is bigger and thicker in, than any dumbbell you'll ever find. Um, so a circus dumbbell is super important. Um, just want to say axle can be replaced, by the way, with fat grips. You can always buy fat grips to put around your barbell. Obviously it won't be the same as an axle because axles and sleeves do not rotate. So when you're cleaning and pressing, you don't have any spin. You are pulling dead weight, uh, which is a huge difference. So axle, by the way, axles are pretty cheap. Um, so I would get one of those. Check out things besides Rogue Fitness um, for some cheaper materials in the strongman category. A lot of stuff you can DIY. Loading pin, important. You can DIY a loading pin. K, 
you can get that shit for free from your local beer distributor, um, whether they're sitting outside and you just happen to borrow them or you buy them from a beer distributor. Um, so that I think is a comprehensive list of things that you need. Obviously there's specialty things like a Conan's wheel, a uh, huge piece of equipment that most of us don't have room for in our backyards. Some sort of piece of conditioning equipment would be great. I have an echo bike um, and a rower, so that's all great. You can also just run outside and that's a little bit more, uh, has a little bit more carryover anyways. Other equipment I see a lot in strongman gyms would be a belt squat machine, um, just to kind of get that incredible burn in your legs that you'll feel when you're doing tire flubs, when you're doing a trunk pull that requires a lot of work capacity and conditioning. So equipment wise, log, important, cannot be replaced. You cannot replicate a log even with a neutral grip handle barbell, um, cannot be replaced. Axle, sort of replace it with um, fat grips. You can get, make one at home, stones, Irreplaceable. Yes, you can buy a loading pan and load it up or take a sleeve off the end of an old barbell. Don't advise it. Sandbags, um, easy to make, cheap to buy, um, totally filling up duffel bags, filling up um, filler bags from Home Depot, that kind of stuff. Sled, same thing, easy to make. I, I bought my rope for $12 at um, Home Depot that I used to pull my sled around. Uh, farmer handles, hard to replace. I know Spud Inc. sells some cheap ones that you can just put uh, your what you call it, your bumper plates on or your steel plates on. However, I think nothing replaces the farmer handle like a, a farmer carry handle. Trap bar can be used for farmer carries as well. You just can't load up as much because a farmer handle, it's weight per size. You've got both sleeves. It's like having two barbells in your hands. Um, you can load up way more on two barbells than just one trap bar. So typically in any competition, you'll see the farmer carry, it's your body weight in each hand at least. Um, tires, cheap, usually free. Uh, small tires to load up things onto, like when you drop your service dumbbell or you drop your stone, you don't want to drop that on concrete and have them go kaboom. Um, you don't want to dent the shit out of your surface dumbbell. Loading pin, great things. Uh, the duck walk is a big event that you see pretty frequently in Strongman, as well as the power stairs, um, which you can train for and replicate with a box. So if you have a bench, you can just do it on the bench um, or onto dirt blocks or onto a box jump. Kegs can be free or very cheap. Now let's talk about events. You've got medleys, you have a stone medley, as many as possible. You're going one stone to the next, to the next, to the next, up on the higher platforms and heavier weight, um, of course. Um, then you've got farmer walks to frame walks. That can also be a medley. You can have a farmer walk this way, grab the next heavier one this way, back and forth for 25 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, whatever. Log clean and press. Um, that's a big one that you see all the time, just like um, an actual clean and press. You see that a lot. The squat. I don't see a squat a ton. It wasn't the world's strongest man for a really heavy ass squat. Uh, you should have a really strong squat anyways uh, because you're picking up you're picking up really heavy shit, um, such as for a tire flip and for the yoke, a uh, big carryover with the squat anyway, especially front squat. Deadlift, you'll be deadlifting either a barbell, an axle, both. Um, deadlifting heavy freaking things, car deadlift, truck deadlift, that kind of thing. Conan's wheel, that's the thing you push around, and then also a Viking press, uh, something you see sometimes. Uh, truck pull, I think I said truck pull already. Truck pull, train pull, pulling some sort of thing. Keg toss or bag toss, sandbag over bar, usually 15 feet in the air, um, or a keg. Keg can also be part of medleys, stones, sandbags, um, kegs, whatever, could be part of a medley. Duck walk, that's just the heavy power pin that you're walking with like a little duck. Uh, power stairs, taking that power pin up the stairs. Uh, Fingal's finger is like a gigantic long bar that you gotta walk all the way up and pick it up and toss it around the other side. And usually it's AMRAP um, for 60 seconds. Hercules hold, that's the two giant things on the side of you are just trying to hold. Um, it reminds me of the Iron Cross in gymnastics. Uh, Viking press for center ready. And I think that is just about everything that you see pretty frequently. You will never see a bench press event in Strongman. If you do, please let me know because I would love to be there. Um, now, starting strongman, how to train for strongman. I would advise having four strength days a week. I think that that is the most ideal, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or um, really between your big lists, especially your priority lists, giving yourself at least 24 to 40 hours in between them, I would advise, especially because strongman has a ton of back work, guys, like a shit ton of back work. So if you are training the deadlift, that's a lot of back. And then you decide to go to overhead press the next day. That's also a lot of back, a lot of, of stability. And then squat, again, the weight's on your back. So a ton of back stability, even if it's a front squat, 
ton of stability, a ton of strength in your mat, get some gaps in between those. I think that these ones should be spaced out 40 hours apart, and then you could split this one up only 24 hours because the bench generally doesn't um, fatigue you as much, and it's probably the least important when it comes to strongman. Obviously, if you're training for a powerlifting event, these three should be your most important, and this overhead, overhead press day is one that is more accessory lifting. Um, conditioning, huge part of uh, strongman. You are running with heavy weights. I'm talking literally running. You carry a stone and you're running with it 50 feet. And those competitions come down to like one to two seconds. So really condition is important. I don't care where you put it, it just needs to get done. And we're not talking about like on a treadmill, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off of like a light jog or 10 minutes on the elliptical. We're talking about sprints. We're talking about like, um, heavy conditioning events that either could be doing your lift, you could be doing front squats every minute, all the minute, that kind of stuff. So when we're looking at your training really four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, we'll just call it that for now, so the least amount of break between those two. Conditioning wise, uh, put it at the beginning of your workout, every minute on the minute of a, a farmer's carry or a stone over bar, whatever. Work capacity is huge. Build up your work capacity. You have to be able to push through fatigue um, in those kind of events. So I think that conditioning is really great to either put at the beginning, put as part of your assistance work, um, or put it as a finisher, some sort of conditioning in the workout. What about core? Core is the most important part. I think that a lot of people fail on the deadlift and on the squat because of a weak core or a core stability issue or breathing and bracing issue, which is all core. Core should be a part of your workout. Um, I directly train core all the time. Core is my favorite thing to train. Um, we're not talking about like doing like crunches. We're talking about breathing and bracing. We're talking about dragon flags, human flags, hanging knee raises, hanging leg raises, uh, windshield wipers, those kind of things. Uh, abandoned rotation, landmine rotations, all those kind of things. Um, I learned a lot of this from Brian Alsera and um, from Mind Pump TV, Mind Pump Media. A lot of their material is, is, is really functional core work. So that's a huge part of it. Olympic lifting, that's the other thing that most people forget about when it comes to strongman is that it's not just powerlifting with different implements. It's powerlifting, sure, like the deadlift and the squat, um, but it's with different implements, yes, but it's also the Olympic lifts. You have to clean and press weights. They don't, and, and for the overhead press events, it doesn't matter how you get it up. A lot of people do a push press or a clean and jerk. So learning the split jerk, learning a clean and jerk, learning how to um, lift properly in the Olympic lifts. Um, and working on, on mobility, the bigger you get, usually the harder it is to, to work on that um, that mobility, especially in like a, a snatch position overhead with the barbell, then you will never be snatching overhead in strongman. But the point is, is mobility is really important because the Olympic lifts will be a part of your training. So conditioning, make sure you include it. Um, we're not talking about the elliptical for 10 minutes. We're not talking about, you know, easy stuff. I really enjoy the giant set format that I've learned from Brian. Um, and I think that I would always advise doing your conditioning either in the beginning, um, and if you think that your conditioning is gonna make you weak, that means your work capacity is not good. Um, so you need to work on it. You need to get your conditioning up because that's what will make or break you in an event. Some strongman events are two, three, four days, um, and it's in the, like just awful heat in the summertime. So you need to be able to build that work capacity, work on, you know, still crushing it when you're sweating your ass off, when you're absolutely dying. So work capacity, huge, conditioning, huge. Put it at the beginning, put it as a part of your giant set. Uh, the cer certain conditioning, things like a kettlebell swing, really great explosive stuff to put before your deadlift. So a sample week, um, for me, something that I would really like to do, especially kind of in the beginning of my strongman building, um, I like to try to look at some of the events and really work on the skills involved, like um, a log clipping and press, axle work, grip training, um, atlas stone sandbags. So I might do um, for, let's just call this Monday, deadlift day, you start off with a farmer walk with your body weight in each hand, 50 foot walks or 100 foot walks every minute on the minute, five to 10 minutes, depending on what your what your day looks like. If you've got a full hour um, in the gym, then do it for 10 minutes. If you only have 45 minutes, do it for five minutes. Then you go on your actual deadlift work. You could go for three sets of three to five, try to keep your reps low because in a strongman competition, generally speaking, you'll be going for either a one rep or um, an AMRAP at a really heavy weight. So you've got to learn how to work with heavy weights um, frequently. So working for sets of one, two, three, four, depending on where you are in your cycle, if you're at the beginning of the cycle, lighter weights uh, for more reps. So maybe five sets of six, 
if you do it the way that I like to do it, um, I like to do the giant set format now. That's been kind of what I've been working with um, since I've been following a lot of um, Brian's programming, where you have three exercises in the giant set, maybe four. So you've got one exercise of explosive for the hips. So you've got like your kettlebell swing first before your deadlift, get an explosion. Two, you've got your deadlift, uh, working up to say a three to five rep max. Third exercise would be a core focus exercise. So like a dragon flag, um, band of rotations, glued ham raise halos, something like that. Um, as many sets as you can until you build up to that three rep max. So that could be four sets, that could be five, that could be six. Then you go into assistance work. Um, assistance work for the deadlift, you could do a deadlift row, lots of rowing involved, I have rowing every day. Um, a deadlift row, you could do a bent over row. Um, I would say the best way to do something like this, instead of three sets of 12, do it every minute on the minute format that's fast. So every minute on the minute for 10 minutes, I will do five deadlift rows and um, five, something else for hip explosion. So you could do stone over shoulder um, or stone to shoulder, five and five, every minute on the minute for 10 minutes. Then move on to your second, like third tier conditioning. Uh, we're not conditioning training assistance work. So I do glute ham raises um, every minute on the minute for 10 minutes. Uh, paired with you know 10 glute ham raises and some weak point in my lift. I think it's really important to train the weak point. So if you have trouble breaking the bar off the ground, odds are it's your setup, but um, working on that deadlift, that portion of the deadlift, you could do deficit deadlifts, you could do pause deadlifts, something like that at a much lighter load. And then you go on to some kind of finisher. So if your hamstrings are a really big weak point for you, something that's direct for the hamstrings, maybe you're doing hamstring walkouts, you're doing rollouts of the stability ball, you're doing Nordic curls, uh, something like that. And if you didn't do your conditioning in the beginning, do your conditioning at the end in some sort of EMOM format. So that would be a deadlift day where you've got that giant set, you've got assistance, you have time, you do a third level. Um, if you don't get rid of it and focus on your finisher only. Squat, same thing, start with conditioning. The squat, most people are too slow in the squat, they get stuck in the bottom. So some of the explosive, I love a weighted jump squat beforehand. Um, so on the squat day, let's say I don't start with conditioning, I do my giant set and I'll have a weighted jump squat, my squat for a three to five rep max, and then a core exercise, um, maybe an oblique focus core exercise. And you do it for that, as many reps, as many rounds as you can until you get to that three to five rep max or wherever you're training that day. And then you go on to um, your assistance work. I would always advise when you're working in a program, don't do it all the same um, rep ranges. So if you're training for a three to five rep squat max, you shouldn't go for three to five rep max on your front squat, your assistance work. Um, you're just way too much CNS fatigue, um, and there's a ton of CNS being fatigued the entire time when you're training for these events. So let's say squat day, you've got your jump squat, your squat, and a core exercise, let's just call it a, um, a glute ham raise halo or halo. If you've never seen that, I'll link a video. Um, then you pick another one of your events, something that's great would be a yoke walk. Um, you could do yoke walks for time and a front squat, something that is gonna really assist your work. So let's call it your assistance work. Um, I really struggle with my upper back, so I'll do um, rows. And then something that will really help me with getting out of the bottom of the squat. Typically it's that middle to bottom portion where I kind of start to feel that instability. So maybe I'll do a heavy walkout, just walking out with heavy weight, getting used to that um, bar on my back or something explosive, like a tire flip, right? Um, things like that. And then you go on your finisher. So another great thing, if you didn't do that yoke walk in your assistance, maybe you were more front squat focused, um, front squat row for your assistance, your finisher could be a yoke walk. So that yoke walk, you're going 50 feet, 100 feet every minute on a minute for five to 10 minutes. Maybe you're doing tire flips, three tire flips and a 50 foot yoke walk every minute on the minute for five to 10 minutes, something like that. Then move on to overhead press day. Change up what you're overhead pressing. Maybe you're working with axle today, maybe you're working with the log, maybe you're working with just the barbell. Um, are you doing more of a push press? Or are you doing a strict press? Uh, I would always do both in the day. So for me, recently, what I really like to do is um, I don't start with conditioning on my overhead press day. Usually, I like to do um, three exercises, some sort of hard to do pull up, because it's the opposite of the overhead press. You're pulling down instead of pushing up. So a globe pull up, some sort of hard to grip pull up. If you you know, get some grips, get some cannonball grips, get a globe, get the grandfather clock grips, grab, put a rope over the bar and do rope pull-ups uh, for the same number of reps that you're gonna do your overhead press. So if I'm going for a five rep max on overhead press, I'll do five globe pull-ups, five overhead press, and then a core exercise 
Dragonfly, you could do V-ups, you could do anything. Um, hollow rocks, another great one. Assistance, I wanna work on my push press, so maybe you're gonna log clean and press or axle or barbell push press um, for a high repetition, so maybe I'll do 10. And I know that's really difficult for me to do 10 reps and stay focused and consistent and work on my breathing and bracing. I'll do that plus an isolation exercise. My triceps are my weak point right now, so I'll do tricep pushdowns um, and alternate between those five rounds of 10 reps each. 10 uh, overhead press, push press, 10 tricep pushdowns, extensions. Then you've got your finisher for that. If you have a, a third level assistance work, you can always put that stuff in there too. More tricep work, maybe one shoulder's a little bit weaker than the other. So you work on shoulder stability with maybe a, a yoke overhead hold, uh, something like that. And then some sort of finisher to really burn you out. So we typically don't see a lot of lateral raises in uh, strongman, uh, but it's really important to train that side delt. So maybe you're gonna train side delt and rear delt focus um, in your finisher, always try to look at your assistance work and your finisher work as ways to hit weak points within your lift and weak points in your body that you're missing. I don't do bicep curls anymore because there's so much bicep involved in strongman, but I do know that my triceps need extra attention right now. My lats need extra attention. So maybe I will do a lat pull down on either this day or deadlift day. Maybe I will do tricep work on, on um, my overhead press day or my bench day because obviously the tricep is a huge contributor to overhead press and bench. And then bench day is a day you can kind of have some fun because it doesn't really affect your strongman events except for the like pushing strength, working on leg drive, which is huge for overhead press um, in strongman, which by the way is not a strict press hardly ever. Um, it's usually using leg drive. So big deal to learn leg drive um, to get a strong overhead press and to get a strong bench press. So maybe I'm working on a log bench press, barbell bench press, higher repetition, maybe I want to get closer to one rep max, try to get in that thousand pound club, whatever it is. Um, changing your grip, using a multi-grip bar, a Swiss bar, whatever you want to call it, something like that, to make it more interesting. And also getting more familiar with the equipment. This is a really good day, since this isn't as important for your, um, for your strongman events, this is a great day to get more familiar with the equipment. So you want to work on explosive power um, pressing over. You could use a log or use the axle working on that grip. Always trying to incorporate that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that conditioning is great um, on the bench day as well to work on things that um, at, a, at a lighter load. So if you didn't get any kind of circus dumbbell in recently, great time to throw that in there. Um, if you didn't get to get another farmer's carry, great time to do something like that. Um, sled work. I think sled work is excellent and very important to do on a squat day or a deadlift day as conditioning. Um, just because you've got to remember too is CNS recovery for your central nervous system to recover between these days. You don't want your conditioning to kill it. Um, you want to work hard to build up your work capacity, but being smart about it. So if you know that this is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and on Saturday you are crushing these sled pulls or you're crushing a farmer's carry that's really, really heavy, are you gonna be adequately recovered in 48 hours to complete a really important day like the deadlift day? So be smart about your conditioning. Uh, I really do think that the giant set format makes a lot of sense. You can get a lot done a lot quicker in all the training I've ever done. I've done a ton of programs. Um, this is the smartest and the fastest and the most enjoyable um, that I've ever done. So always include conditioning, don't forget about it. Core work, great. Be um, conscious of your events. If you're getting ready for a competition, you need in advance to be prepping for these events. So if you know you specifically have a, a stone medley, you should be doing practice in that stone medley. Um, don't ignore these events and just train for a deadlift, squat, and overhead press because yes, these are incredibly important, but so are all these things, including simple events. So it is a very busy sport in the sense that you never know what's gonna come at you. Um, you could be loading, clean and pressing a block it could be a Husafel stone, it could be a, a Atlas stone, you have no idea what it is, um, whether it's medley format or just as many reps as possible over a bar, onto a platform with one weight. You really don't know um, until you see what competition you're, you're signing up for. So be aware of all, all those things. Equipment wise, these are all very important. Um, obviously expensive to incorporate all these things and to, and to accumulate all these things. So finding a strongman gym or kind of some DIY projects would be awesome. And I think that's it guys. Um, obviously a ton of stuff in one video, but starting Strongman, it is a complicated sport. There's a lot of things involved in it uh, that I'm still really learning about. Uh, biggest carryover is don't forget about conditioning. It's very important. Don't forget that you're trying to build your work capacity and don't ignore your core. 
Um, breathing and bracing is really important. If you don't have a good, adequate understanding of the main lifts, especially these three, of uh, breathing and bracing, and um, how to actually use the implements you're working with, you're gonna get hurt and you're gonna not recover in time in between and you won't be successful in any of the competitions or any of your lifts. So play smart, learn proper form. I've been making videos on troubleshooting of all these exercises, um, tips, how to grow your deadlift, how to grow your squat, uh, what I'm doing to grow my deadlift and squat, what I've learned, mistakes I've made, and cues and things like that. So that'll be upcoming. But any questions, comment below. I can share the links of all the things I purchased and where I got them from and where I recommend you get them from and some reviews coming up soon. But other than that, see you guys later. Hope this was helpful. Um, and get some conditioning in. Don't ignore it. Anyone that tells you conditioning before your lifts will make you weak. Uh, they just have bad work capacity. So don't be like them.